stop getting baited by high corruption. There's a strategy in Last Epoch that enables you to farm a lot of uniques and exalted items without having to be like a five, six, seven, eight hundred, one thousand corruption. You don't need to be pressured by all these um uh people that are pushing high corruption, telling you which build is the best for high corruption. Um you don't need to be pressured by this. It's not necessary. You can go to like two or three hundred corruption. I, I recommend like at least 300, but 200 is also fine. And if your build can handle it, you can go to five or 600. But the most important thing is that whatever corruption you stay at, your build is fast at doing objectives and is efficient. And here's how the strategy goes. So if you have a look at my monolith over here, I'm at 300 corruption, okay? So you, you see nothing special on the screen. I, well, it's interesting that this was a unique item. This was a unique item. Um, and I have like two unique items here. That's that's all right, I guess, right? So nothing special. I mean, I, I've done a lot of gazes of Orobis, um, the boss, but if you go a little bit and zoom out, you'll see that I have completed quite a bit of this monolith. But what's more interesting about this monolith is that my rewards are insane right now on it. So if you have a look, see, unique item, unique item, exalted items, two uniques, three uniques, four uniques, five, four exalted here. All right, let's go a little bit on the left. Yeah, more exalted and uniques. These are completed, but as you can see, one unique, two unique. All right, okay, more, more here, more here. All right, my rewards are pretty much insane. Uh, this is a unique, this is a unique. So if you, like, as you can see, like a, a, about 80% of my, maybe at 70, at least 70% of my monolith is like only good rewards. All my echoes are like worth doing, kind of. So this is like, a, in my opinion, the best strategy to be consistently farming good items at a very good pace. What you need is like a decently fast build that's comfortable at whatever corruption you choose to be staying at. The higher, the better, obviously. But if if like 500 corruption is going to make my build uh, do echoes um, uh, like a minute longer, then I don't need that. I would rather sit back at lower corruption and just far more efficiently. But the way you can get these rewards to be that good on a monolith is by setting up your monolith in a specific way by using beacons, vessels of chaos, and vessels of memory the correct way. So how do you do that? First of all, you're going to start at your starting point, and you're going to start exploring kind of as if you're pushing corruption, but you're not exactly really pushing corruption, right? So you're going to try and get the furthest possible point away from the... Um, from the starting point until you encounter like one of these, for example, it's um, one of these echoes, um, gaze of Orobis or whatever it's called. The one that resets the e eco web. So this this one, you don't run it. Uh, but what you do is instead, when, once you start encountering these, you can you you proceed by like expanding from different ways until you you like open all of the corners of the map so like like this in in this way so you, you want to expand like a little bit like a web or like um i don't know branches of a tree or something like that you know how uh, you start with one node uh, let's say from here then you expand through these two and like you explore most of the monolith this way so you want to reveal as much of the monolith as possible but on your way to revealing as much of the monolith as possible you want to be doing only the good rewards and leaving as much of the bad rewards undone as possible. And why do you want to do that? Because once you encounter one of these vessels of chaos, once you encounter one of these vessels of chaos, you do that, make sure you've done all the good rewards before that on your monolith, then you, you run this thing, and all of the uncompleted echoes will uh, reroll their rewards, and they have a high chance of getting better outcomes. So you run this, then you get new good rewards, then you, you run to the quickest path to the new rewards, 
grab those, and then you can run a second one. And then your new rewards, or like your new echoes, the uh, resetted ones, will also have new better rewards. And this way, like, you, you, you come to a state where your whole monolith is like mostly good rewards. And this is where the fun part starts. Once you've completed all these good rewards, you have another thing that you can use to your advantage. So you can complete all these good rewards that you've stacked up in different echoes. You can use a, an echo of memory or like a vessel of memory, sorry, that will let you run all of these echoes again. So you run a vessel of chaos, you reset the rewards, you do only the good ones, and then eventually you get to one of those, which is a vessel of memory, and then it will revert all completed echoes, and all of the ones you have good rewards at, you can do those again. And so you have like one session of good rewards only. And if your build is fast, like mine, like 30 seconds to two minutes stops for like an echo, you're gonna be you're gonna be getting a lot of good rewards, and they're gonna stack up very quick. So um, another thing that's really important for the strategy is these beacons. These beacons here. Make sure you always complete a beacon when you see it, because it will reveal like at least four or five nodes around you. So these um, beacons are very important. Do them as soon as you see one of those, and then your goal is to find at least one vessel of chaos and one Vessel of Memory. And then what you do is, you do Vessel of Chaos first, then Vessel of Memory. Okay, that being said, the more Vessels of Chaos and Vessels of Memory you manage to get in a monolith, the better setup you're going to have. So really exploring as much as possible outwards in like a three branch looking way is um, very important. So if you get two vessels of memory and one chaos, the strategy changes. Then it's recommended that you do the first vessel of memory so you can, uh, you can, you can get your rewards to reset. So not the rewards, but the echoes. With, they stay with the same rewards. So you reset the whole web and then you choose the most efficient path to your good rewards. You do those and this way you have now a lot of uncompleted nodes. Then you run a vessel of chaos. All of these uncompleted nodes reroll over their rewards. And now you have a lot of nodes to have the potential um, to get good rewards. But what happens if you have two vessels of chaos and two vessels of memory? So you run one vessel of memory, you choose the best path, and then twice in a row you get to reroll your rewards, complete them, then you reroll again. All right. So most of your monolith at this point will have very good rewards. And then in the end, you do whatever remaining amount of vessels of memory you have, and all these rewards that you've stacked up, you can do again. So imagine, imagine you have like a couple vessels of chaos, like I have here, one, two, three, four. Unfortunately, I only have one vessel of memory. If I, if I had two vessels of memory, I would run all these rewards like two or three times, you know? But, um, Unfortunately, this was only one vessel of memory. So I ran, I ran my, my monolith first to reveal all the rewards. Then I ran the first vessel of chaos. So then I chose whatever good rewards I had. I ran those. Then I did the second vessel of chaos. I would then once again scouted for the good rewards, did those. Then I ran the third vessel of chaos, scouted for good rewards, then did the vessel of memory. And now I can do all these good rewards that I've done again. And like my whole monolith is full of like very good rewards. And then, um, if you have uh, one vessel of chaos and one vessel of memory, you can still do that, and you're still gonna get good rewards. But the more you have, the merrier. So uh, this is actually this is the rule that you have to follow. You you run those and you explore a, until at least one vessel of chaos and one vessel of memory. It's recommended that you get more than that, but if if you can't find any. One of each is fine. If you have one vessel of memory, then first you run all, all of the chaos, as many as they are. You run those first. Make sure after each of them you complete the good rewards before you run the next one. If you have two vessels of memory, you run one, mem one vessel of memory first, so you can reroll the whole mon monolith, and then you can choose the best 
best pathing, thus leaving all the bad rewards uncompleted. So whenever you run the Vessels of Chaos next, you have more opportunities for good loot. And then the third memory and the fourth memory, you do all of them at, at the end. So you can reroll a monolith. If you get like three Vessels of Memory and two Vessels of Chaos, you're going to have like insane looting session. You're going to get like probably, I don't know, tens, tens, Maybe even hundreds of uniques and exalted items, but like couple hundreds of exalted items. It's like you can set up your monolith in this very insane and efficient way as long as you build these fast turning objectives, because you do have to do a lot of echoes with the strategy. I think that this strategy is the absolute min max to getting good loot in this game. It doesn't matter if you're Circle of Fortune, if you're Merchant's Guild. I think this is the best way to be consistently farming unique items and exalted items. And it doesn't matter really as long as you're over 200 corruption. Because 200 corruption, I think, is like a good scale for like getting consistently decent rewards. If you can manage to be fast at 500 corruption, that's completely fine. If you manage to be fast at 1000 corruption, that's completely fine. You're probably going to have a hard time beating the speed of a falconer, but at least, with, I, for example, with Acolyte, you can get to like a very high corruption and still be like somewhat speedy. But you don't need to be stressed about all these, oh, I'm at a 1000 corruption, oh, what type of corruption I can push. Yeah, that's interesting when you get to the point of like trying to see how good your build can be, but you can also do that in the arena. You know, it depends what you like. But, um, for farming items, this is the best way to set up your monoliths. It's like monolith engineering of sorts, and it's very rewarding. I've been getting unique. Uh, I've been getting a unique every second echo, and it's it's so consistent and it's it's amazing. And the dopamine you get from it is is pretty nice as well. Once you get like the whole monolith reset at the end. So remember, always do beacons. Always do beacons. Uh, review as much as possible, but do the least amount of unwanted rewards. All right. Okay. And then you push until you get at least one chaos and one memory, but the more the merrier. I personally will push until I have four, four of the whatever. I mean, at least one memory and at least, or like one memory, three chaos, or two memories, two chaos, or uh, one chaos, three memory. That's the least I'll push to. And then your rewards get like consistently good and you can pick what you're on and it's it's great. One thing to note, once you do, once you're on the vessel of memory, you're only able to start either from your vessel of chaos or from your vessel of memory or from your starting point. So you're going to have to make your way back to like all the nodes. But that's fine. You're going to be swimming in uniques. I've I've made 9 mil gold on the Merchant's Guild so far. All of these idols are like 2 mil each at least. These items are pretty expensive that I have. 2 LP. This is pretty good. My rares are pretty expensive. Some of my rings were like 1, 2 mil. Um, I've invested a lot in my build. And it's due to this strategy because it's very profitable, very efficient, and you get a lot of good loot. I imagine if you're Circle of Fortune, you'll consistently be getting more good rewards as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I wanted to share this strategy. It's very unedited right now. I didn't have time to edit the video to show you properly with good explanations. This is the best version of it I can give you because I want to try more. Um, I want to try the game more. I want to see what this game is about more. And at the, at the same time, I really wanted to share with you this information that I found uh, because I think that's the best way to be getting your characters. Um, if, if you found this helpful in any way whatsoever, please consider leaving a comment maybe or subscribing to my channel. I, I really appreciate all that support. And if you want to see me live and ask me any questions, you can catch me on twitch.tv um, crumblepoe. I hope this was helpful to some of you guys. I w I'm also working on a trading spreadsheet if you care about Merchants Guild and I'm working on a trading loot filter as well. Um, and you'll be seeing those soon on my channel. 
Bye guys, thank you for watching. See you next video.